Hello and welcome everyone. I'm John M. Hawkins. The show is my strategy and we're coming to you live from the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. We're very happy to be here with you today and glad you can join us. Uh, my strategy episodes are on Saturdays. They're live from 10 a.m. Pacific uh, at 1 p.m. Eastern. Today we're going to be talking about the gig economy. We're going to be exploring the gig economy, the drivers behind it, current situation, how it's reshaping careers, and I'm going to give you some tips and tricks to develop your strategy. We're well, very happy to be here with you today and glad you can join us again. Uh, Saturday, for me, is a great day to reflect. It's the day I choose of the week uh, to start thinking about my strategy, and I hope you can uh, choose a day of the week as well. But keep in mind that any day is a good day to assess your strategy. The My Strategy Show is growing. We're now available on iHeart, iTunes, Player FM, YouTube, SoundCloud, Spreaker, and many more digital platforms. So if you'd like to listen to this episode or go back and listen to a past episode, you can find them there. You can find me on most social media platforms. Uh, my Twitter handle is at HawkinsJohn. That's at HawkinsJohn. Or you can go to my website at JohnMHawkins.com. And just like anything in life, we need to have a strategy and a plan to help us reach our goals because the best laid plans don't always work. Now this week, I am looking for stories on the gig economy. If you have any good examples, perhaps a tip or a trick, uh, if you do, send it to talk at johnmhawkins.com. Also, uh, we do have our weekly, our monthly, <clears throat> excuse me, giveaway going on. If you go to Hawkins John on Twitter or johnmhawkins.com, you have about 24 hours to enter into this month's giveaway. Uh, this month, we're giving away a $200 prize package, $100 cash Visa gift card to you, and then we're also doing a $100 in your honor donation uh, to the Toys for Tots, which is an organization that gives toys to needy children. Uh, and it's something that, uh, it's part of our Pay It Forward uh, giveaway. So this week, we're, though, we're talking about the gig economy. We're going to be talking about the gig economy and what it's all about. I want to go through some statistics with you. There's also some interesting drivers behind it. So we're going to go behind some of those drivers and give you some additional data on exactly why this gig economy is growing. We're going to talk a little bit about the current state of the gig economy, the various components of the gig economy. What are some of the technology platforms? There's gig workers. There's also consumers who are contributing to this phenomenon. We're then going to talk a little bit about the impact on the gig economy in reshaping careers. There's an impact on those traditional nine-to-five jobs. We're going to talk a little bit about that and really go into the types of skills and training that's required for these types of gig economy jobs. We're then going to talk about thriving in the gig economy. So if you're somebody who's in the gig economy or participating, um, there's certain tips and tricks that you can do uh, to help you thrive. Uh, this was based off of most of the information I'm, I'm gathering here is off of a study that followed 65 gig economy workers. And then finally, we're going to help you develop your gig strategy and talk a little bit about what are some of the important things that you need to know if you want to thrive in the gig economy. Things like stay with something you know, learning to manage your side hustle while you're employed, uh, keeping visible, and things like that. But more to come later in the show. All right, so we're talking to today about the gig economy. We've got an article here by Aaron Duffin. It is uh, Gig Economy in the United States. It says here, the gig economy is a section of the economy which consists of independent contractors, freelancers, who perform temporary flexible jobs. Gig economy workers have many different reasons for starting work in the gig economy, and they tend to prefer the flexible working hours and extra income that the gig economy allows them to have. The gig economy does not only consist of people who exclusively work gig jobs, as the majority of gig e economy participants have full-time positions in addition to their gig work. According to a BLS survey on contingent worker population, the term contingent worker includes freelancers, independent contractors, consultants, and other non-permanent workers who are hired on a project-by-project -project basis. Some interesting statistics here. 
And again, this is uh, from one source of, of, uh, of data here. Uh, but it says the median weekly income of male gig economy workers is 653 USD per week. Uh, shares of high earning independence in 2019 was 20%. Top methods for these freelancers was PayPal. Annual expenses spent on business travel was 564 US dollars. Millennials with retirement plans in the gig economy is 13%. Gig workers with medical insurance, 40%. Gig workers with no retirement savings, 39%. Baby boomer gig workers with medical insurance is 55%. Shares of gig economy workers satisfaction with their financial situation is 59%. Share of gig workers satisfied with their current job is 80%. Share of gig workers who say flexibility is important is 90%. I'm going to think a little bit about these two statistics here. 80% of them are satisfied with their current working situation. And over 95% of them say flexibility is important to them. More on that later. But what this means to me is that really, while there are some interesting reasons why we are in the gig economy, uh, people are choosing the gig economy due to flexibility uh, and also um, being able to remain independent. Got another article here that continues to talk about some of the interesting statistics here. Um, it is an article uh, by Myla my, Milankovic, and it's called The Future Employment, 30 Telling Gig Statistics. We talk a little bit about gone are the days of working nine to five and enter into the gig economy. And they've highlighted some of the important statistics to them. It says the size of the gig economy, about 36% of workers are now involved in the gig economy. And statistics provided by the Bureau of Labor show there were 55 million U.S. gig workers in 2017. Most recent and reliable data is from Gallup poll. 40% of U.S.-based workers generate a large part of their income via the gig economy. This is according to payments.com. And data from the latest gig economy index shows that around 40% of U.S. workers generate 40% of their income by working independently. The yearly increase in number of freelance workers keeps getting higher, according to Wanolo. Winolo report that the gig economy growth rate is speeding up in the year. The total number of freelancers in the U.S. was up by 4.2 in 2017 alone compared to 1.3 in 2015. In 2018, U.S. independent workers spent a billion hours per week, per week, freelancing. This is according to Upwork. The gig economy is expanding three times faster than the U.S. workforce as a whole. U.S. freelancers contributed $1.28 trillion to the American economy in 2018. In 2013 alone, micro-businesses owned by freelancers generated $2.4 trillion. If the gig economy keeps growing at the current pace, more than 50% of the U.S. workforce will be participating by 2027. More than 50% of the full-time independent workers feel more financially secure than those who are traditionally employed. 51% of these freelancers would not go back to the traditional work for any amount of money. And 26% of millennials think the gig economy offers more security than traditional work. Also, 84% of freelancers are living their preferred life cycle. So some interesting statistics here. You are listening to My Strategy. I'm your host, John M. Hawkins, coming to you live from the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. When we come back, we're going to talk about the current state of the gig economy. We'll be right back. Hello and welcome back, everyone. I'm your host, John M. Hawkins. We're coming to you live from the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. The show is called My Strategy. Well, very happy to be here with you today. Glad you can join us. Quick reminder, we've got our monthly giveaway. Uh, if you go to Hawkins John on Twitter or johnmhawkins.com, it'll give you all the rules uh, to enter. Uh, that giveaway officially ends in the next 24 hours. So make sure you get there soon. Um, right before the break, we were talking about the gig economy, what it's all about. 
In this segment, I want to talk a little bit about the current state of the gig economy. Now, I've got an article here called The Future of Work, The Rise of the Gig Economy. Um, this is uh, produced by, it's a white paper, uh, produced by um, a, uh, a futures lab. And basically, um, the managing directors there put together their assessment of what the gig economy is all about. So if you're interested uh, in, in getting this article, it's called The Future of Work, The Rise of the Gig Economy. They talk a little bit about how people work, live, and spend their money it has all dramatically changed over the past decade, especially with the advent of smartphone technology. Being hyper-connected via social networks has increased communications and opened up a number of ways to make and spend money. Um, picking up a gig or temporary work engagement is as easy as making plans for dinner. Finding a date, the so-called gig economy is altering the way people view and perform work, and counties must be ready to respond with innovative policies and program. So this article is designed really to help counties figure out what to do with it. But there is some good information for us from a personal development perspective. They say, what is the gig economy? Well, the gig economy consists of three main components. Uh, the independent workers paid by the gig. Well, somebody who is doing a task or a project, which is as opposed to those workers who receive a salary or hourly wage. The consumers who need a specific service, for example, a ride to their next destination or a particular item delivered. And finally, the companies that connect the workers to the consumer in a direct matter, including app-based technology platforms such as Uber, Airbnb, Lyft, Etsy, TaskRabbit, or many others. And basically, this connects the worker to this gig economy. They say these companies make it easier for workers to find quick temporary jobs or a gig which can include any kind of work from musical performance to fixing a leaky faucet. One of the main differences between a gig and traditional work arrangements, however, is that a gig is temporary and the worker is paid specifically for that job. They talk a little bit about how the gig economy is not really a new concept, but they do talk a lot about how it has been, um, it has started to grow rapidly due to technology. They said the share of U.S. workforce in the gig economy rose from 10% in 2005 to 18% in 2015. And in 2016, a 24% of Americans reported earning some money from the digital platform economy during, uh, rap compared to the previous year. It says the number of self-employed individuals, many of whom were independent workers in the gig economy, soared by over 19% from 2005 to 2015. Now, according to Ms. Turner, who's one of the article, authors of this article, she says that this past decade's growth of the gig workforce has been driven by development of new technologies that enable transactions directly between the providers and the consumers and the difficulty of finding traditional stable jobs. <clears throat> On the other hand, app-based technology platforms are replacing people as middlemen to connect consumers and products quickly and easily allowing individuals to perform a variety of tasks for complete strangers based on real-time demand. On the other hand, people are increasingly gravitating toward this non-traditional sector of employment to supplement their income or simply because they cannot find traditional full-time salaried positions. So we talked a little bit here about what's driving this gig economy. And those three parts are, one, the technology platform companies. So these are the companies uh, that have had a major force in driving it. Uh, we'd mentioned them before, but they're things like Uber, Lyft, Airbnb, any platform that you can go subscribe to, you know, provide your service, find people and, and consumers who are looking for it, and then gives you the ability to connect and do that specific gig. They said that these platforms have a few common distinct commonalities. One, they facilitate direct transactions between the consumer and producer. They provide flexible work schedules for the gig workers, online payments from which many of the platforms take a cut, and then online profiles and review both producer and consumers. So this is definitely one of the enablers of the gig economy. It's providing that direct connection between the consumer and the gig worker. 
Gig workers can be classified into two categories, so there's really two different types. There's the labor workers, for example, handymen, drivers, delivery men, etc. Low-income, less educated workers who rely on a gig for their entire livelihood, often because they have trouble finding other types of job options. But that's only one type of gig worker. Uh, the others uh, provo are people such as artists, craftsmen, retailers, and others. These are higher income, more educated workers who do not depend on their gig work income, often because they have another full-time job. Their gig work generally provides supplemental income. I know people who do Uber driving, for example, as, some, as something to do in the afternoons or the evenings to help supplement their income. And then finally, it's the consumers. The consumers now have options and choices, and they can quickly go and um, find these particular gigs. Now, there are some challenges that this article notes. It says there's a shift in the mindset of work, which is definitely something to be thinking about as we go towards this new economy. There's potential future workplace policy. So not all the policies have been defined for these gig economy. And as a result of that, uh, what they're suggesting here is that there is some give and take with regard to policies, counties, and also those gig workers. And we're seeing many of that in the news uh, with regard to some of the services that provide ride sharing. Um, also, more information here talking about best practices. Essentially, you know, the gig economy is here and something we need to be mindful of. You're listening to My Strategy. I'm your host, John M. Hawkins, coming to you live from the BBM Global Network and Tune In Radio. When we come back, we're going to talk about the gig economy and how it is reshaping careers. We'll be right back. Hello and welcome back, everyone. This is my strategy. I'm your host, John M. Hawkins, coming to you live from the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. Well, very happy to be here with you today. Glad you can join us. Uh, the show is my strategy. It's on Saturdays at uh, 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern. Today we're talking about a pretty exciting topic. It's the gig economy. Right before the break, we were talking about the various components of the gig economy, talked a little bit about technology platforms and how those are enabling this economy. In this segment, I want to talk a little bit about the gig economy and how it is going to reshape your careers. If you think about it, in going to a gig economy, it is going to have an impact on our work. It's going to have an impact on us because rather than having the traditional nine to five, we're now picking up gigs as they are available. So what does all that have to do with the gig economy? Got an article here uh, from John Frazier. It says how the gig economy is reshaping careers for the next generation. And John says that uh, the term gig economy was popularized around the height of 2008 to 2009 around the financial crisis. Uh, that's where the task-based labor has evolved and become a significant factor in the overall economy. The concept of creating income from short-term tasks has been around for a long time, but the gig economy is very broad and encompasses workers who are full-time independent contractors or consultants to people who moonlight for driving for Uber, Lyft several hours a week. In some cases, uh, the workers own a small business, and others, they're freelancers, and they're just paid to complete uh, discrete projects for larger organizations. People such as musicians, photographers, writers, truck drivers, trade skills, all have traditionally been gig workers. In fact, the term gig arguably came from the music industry. Originally, in the Argo of jazz musicians, attested from 1915, but said to have been used in 1905 and is of uncertain origin. So he talks a little bit about how we got here. And they say, he says here that the gig economy suddenly became more important, more, much more than a curiosity during the financial crisis. With swaths of the population facing unemployment, underemployment, many workers picked up temporary engagements where, wherever they could. Uh, these gigs had to be flexible. And some of the workers were able to hold down a full-time job but needed to shore up their income. Others cobbled together in income by working a few gigs at once. Being able to choose working hours was paramount. This drew many to many of the ride-hailing services we know about today. 
He says here over a decade later, we're seeing more gig workers than ever. And according to the CEO of Intuit, Brad Smith, the gig economy is now estimated about 34% of the workforce and expected to be 43% by 2020. So that's almost 50% of the workforce is going to be doing some sort of gig in 2020. And it says Harvard Business Review reported that 150 million workers in North America and Western Europe are engaged as independent contractors. It says gigs run the entire spectrum of pay scales, so you can make all sorts of different amounts of money doing it. They said there's senior executive types who travel to major cities to pick up uh, you know, to pick up uh, work um, by picking. There's also people who are, you know, doing Uber. There are people who are um, also coming in and doing things uh, w- such as Airbnb. So a lot of different ways that you can connect with consumers if you have a skill or a service. He talks a little bit about, you know, the knowledge service types of gigs versus the service based ones. And I think it's important here to think about this. When you think about those knowledge-based gigs, those types of services, the consumer expects you to be the expert in those. So if you're a knowledge-type worker, they don't want to pay to train you. They're expecting that you have all of that training already. So as we think about the gig economy and trying to get into it, there is going to be a fair amount of time for these knowledge-based gigs for you to spend to be able to get to a point where you can provide that expertise. Uh, Now compare that with the service-based ones where you can pretty much have some low skill, but you can jump in and make money easily. So for example, driving a car, you know, most adults have a driver's license and have the ability to drive a car. And by providing a platform, a technology platform, you now have the ability to go out and make money. It says here that one of the reasons why Uh, the drivers for the gig economy is that this is taking risk away from large organizations. And it's pushing that risk from the organization onto the individual. So as you start to think about that and these drivers, if there is less risk being put on the organization, that doesn't mean that there isn't risk out there. And I think this is something important to be thinking about from your own perspective as you're picking up these gigs is really think about the implication and the liability that you are taking on by performing these gigs. Somebody has to assume the risk, whether it's you know the platform that provides it or the individual. But at the end of the day, while it might be nice to pick up these various gigs, there are also implications. Um, they, he talks a little bit about you know how we got here with regard to you know organizations trying to really focus on cost cutting, offshoring and salary pruning. Um, But I do think this is an important thing to be thinking about that, uh, you know, as we start to move to this economy, realize that there is a driver for this. We talked about, you know, the platforms. We talked about, you know, people want flexibility, but there really has to be something else. and, And that other thing is the risk. So that's something to really be thinking about. He says here, a lot has occurred within the workplace over the last decade saying Gen Xers and many more millennials have had to reinvent themselves with the changing economy. Time is more at a premium, and now we have these on-demand services with, within the sharing economy. And this is where we have people who are knowledge specialists, and these are, they're being brought in to help um, drive this economy. Uh, saying here that workers now are rarely leaving their home offices because they can have everything at their fingertips, clothing, groceries, hot meals, mail, laundry, anything you can really think of uh, is now being provided by these uh, gig service workers. So as we start to think about what are the implications from a career perspective, that's another nuance as well. He says, in the relentless march of technology to blame for this transformation, Lewis Hyman, a professor of the School of Industrial Labor says, said this, the, la- the history of labor shows that technology does not usually drive social behavior. On the contrary, social change is typically driven by the decisions we make on how to organize our world. Only later does technology swoop in, accelerating and consolidating these changes. You're listening to My Strategy. I am your host, John M. Hawkins, coming to you live from the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. 
When we come back, we're going to talk about thriving in the gig economy. We'll be right back. Hi, and welcome back, everyone. I'm John M. Hawkins. The show is my strategy, and we're coming to you live from the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. Well, if you're just joining us, uh, very happy to be here today and very glad that you could join us. Today, we're talking about the gig economy. In this episode, we're exploring the gig economy, the drivers behind it, current situation, how it's reshaping careers, and we're giving you some tips to develop your strategy. Uh, right before the break, we were talking about uh, the gig economy and how it's reshaping careers. We talked a little bit about risk and some of the implications of going to a gig economy and things that we should be thinking about as we go from our typical 9-to-5 job to a gig job. In this segment, I want to talk a little bit about how we're going to thrive in the gig economy. And there's ups and downs to have being a gig in the gig economy. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about a research study that followed 65 gig economy workers. And there's a great article here that shares some of the tips uh, that we need to be thinking about to be successful. I've got an article here called Thriving in the Gig Economy by Jean Perro. Susan Ashford, and Amy Rezanowski. All right, she says here, the article says here, have you ever been on a trapeze? That's how Martha, the independent consultant, responded when they asked her to describe her work in the five years since she left a major global consulting firm. She'd recently tried the art, which she saw as a good metaphor for her life. The void she felt between assignments, the exhilaration of landing the next engagement, the discipline, the concentration, and the grace of mastering all of this and her professionalism was required. As a seemingly like a trapeze artist seems to take huge risks, she explained, but with a safety system. In the trapeze, they have nets, equipment, fellow performers that support them. But in the gig economy, they don't have all of that system, or do they? So this article talks about the gig economy and comparing it to what you need to do to be successful. And as a trapeze artist needs safety equipment, nets, fellow performers, we want to start thinking about what is the ecosystem, what is the support system that someone participating in the gig economy needs to be successful. So to help figure this out, uh, they went and talked to 65 gig workers, and they found remarkable similar sentiments across the generations and occupations. All those they studied acknowledged that they felt a host of personal, social, and economic anxieties without the cover and support of a traditional employer, but also they claimed their independence was a choice and they would not give up the benefits that came with it. Although they worried about unpredictable schedules and finances, and they felt they had mustered more courage and were living a richer life than their corporate counterparts. So here we go. We've got that balance of taking the risk, going out there, trying to do something on your own versus working for somebody else. Working for somebody else can be very convenient and easy, but as you can see here, those who have taken the leap are finding lots of benefits. They went through, and in this study, <clears throat> they found that there were four different types of connections that people really needed to cultivate to be successful in the gig economy. And they were to place, routines, purpose, and people. And they do cover a little bit more of this later. But essentially, by having those different types of connections, this helped these gig folks endure the emotional ups and downs of their work gain energy and also inspiration from their freedom. So as we start to see this phenomenon grow worldwide, it's important for all of us who are jumping into the gig economy, whether full-time or part-time, to make additional monies uh, for a holiday season or whenever to start thinking about it and these connections we want to build. So number one, they said produce or perish. She said the first thing they realized when beginning the interviewing these independent consultants was that the stakes of independent work were very high, not just financially, but existentially. They were unshackled from the managers, the corporate norms, daily assignments, and they felt that these individuals can be the most they've ever been themselves 
in any job. So lots of benefits there. They do say here that, you know, there are some things that can keep them from being successful. The stress and distractions can erode your success. It impedes your working lives. As one executive coach gave a poignant description of an unproductive day, it's when there is so much to do that I'm disorganized and can't get my act together. And in the evening, the same emails he opened in the morning are still opened. The documents they wanted to get done are not done. They get distracted. They feel like they've wasted time. A day like that leaves him feel full of self-doubt. Well, I think that's part of this, you know, and as you go from having a manager, having somebody who drives your day, tells you what to do, gives you performance and goals, and you jump off onto the into the unknown and working on these gigs, you now are responsible for complete customer satisfaction. You're responsible for, you know, getting the payments potentially. You're responsible for communicating with the client. You're responsible for your success. And having that discipline, being able to be organized is extremely important. Um, and we talk about you know, organization, strategy, and planning every day on the show. So um, let's talk a little bit about the four connections. So place. They suggest to disconnect from a corporate office. The people they interviewed find places to work that protect themselves from outside distractions and pressures and help them avoid the feeling of rootlessness. The second one was routine. In organizations, routines are often associated with safety or boring bureaucracy. However, a growing body of research has shown that elite athletes, scientific geniuses, popular artists, and everyday workers use routines to enhance focus and performance. The professionals we spoke with tend to rely on them in the same way. So as you think about your gig economy performance, what are some of those routines that you need to have in place? The next one is purpose. For most people in the study, uh, striking out on their own initially involved doing whatever work they could find to get them a footprint. But they were adamant that succeeding meant only taking work to clearly connect to a broader purpose. So being able to have that broader purpose, and I think that really seems to be one of the drivers of the gig economy. Uh, people. Humans are social creatures. Studies in corporate settings have long demonstrated how important other people are to our careers as role models who show us who we might become and as peers who help us progress by sharing our path. Researchers have also warned about the loneliness epidemic hitting the workplace, for which independent workers can certainly be even at a greater risk. So those are just four of the things they suggest if you're looking to thrive in the gig economy. You're listening to My Strategy. I am your host, John M. Hawkins, coming to you live from the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. When we come back, we're going to talk about developing your gig strategy. We'll be right back. Hi, and welcome back. I'm John M. Hawkins. We're coming to you live from the BBM Global Network and Tune In Radio. The show is My Strategy. Very happy to be here with you today and glad you could join us. My Strategy. Uh, episodes are live on Saturdays at 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern. Today we're talking about the gig economy, learning quite a bit about it today. And also I want to remind you that we do have our monthly giveaway, uh, which is a $200 value. It's a $100 Visa gift card and a $100 donation in your name, in your honor, uh, to uh, Toys for Tots. Uh, if you'd like to enter, like I said, yeah, about 24 hours to go. Uh, you can go to johnmhawkins.com or uh, go to uh, Hawkins John on Twitter and uh, all the rules, everything you need to, um, to sign up is there. Very simple. Follow me on social media is essentially what you need to do and you can get signed up. All right, so right before the break, we were talking about thriving in the gig economy and learning about some of the pitfalls and things that we need to be able, we need to be thinking about. Now, keep in mind that as I've been going through this whole topic, there is so much information with regard to the gig economy. There's so many things that I'm not covering. I'm really just focusing on some of the, the highlights or the things that I think we need to be thinking about as gig workers uh, in, in this new economy. So uh, keep in mind that uh, you know as you want to go through and learn more about it, I'm giving you uh, all the names of the articles and the authors 
who wrote them, and there's a ton more information out there. Uh, so right now I want to talk a little bit about developing your gig strategy. As you know, my strategy, or maybe you don't know, but my strategy is uh, a show that's designed to help us from a personal development perspective, to help us uh, grow, to help us uh, figure out how to do things better. And strategy is very important uh, to me. And from my perspective, we have a prescriptive methodology uh, for going out and creating our strategy, uh, whereby it's a five-step process, and we start uh, really trying to figure out you know, from the awareness, you know, why is it we're trying to do this, assess and analyze. We build our strategy, we implement our strategy, and then we need to fine-tune the strategy. You know, it's the constant improvement methodology. So in this segment, uh, while we have that as the backdrop, I don't want to go through too much of the strategic planning, uh, but I've got a good article here by Jessica uh, Thiefels, and basically um, she talks a little bit about what it takes to be successful with the gig economy and not so much from what we need to do from a routine perspective but i think this has to do with the mindset and we talked about mindset uh, a couple of weeks ago and now i want to kind of apply this to what we're trying to do in regard to our strategy so our strategy really is our course of actions and in a course of actions you know there's all these things that you do and then there's specific tactics that we choose so in this article, she talks a lot about, you know, the gig economy. But one thing that's interesting here, she says, stay with something you know how to do. And I mentioned this earlier in the show, but she says here that people are freelancers for a few reasons, one of which is they specialize in something and companies don't want to train you like they would a new staff member, which takes time and money. Rather, they want to bring in someone who can get the work done with whatever project-based direction they have to give. And I think this is important as you think about how you're going to be contributing to the gig economy. You know, you have to have some sort of, if you're a knowledge worker, you have to come prepared to be able to deliver a service from start to finish. In organizations, there's training, there's insurance, there's all these other things that they're taking care of. They pay you less money, but as a result of that, you know, they're providing the service to the client. Well, in the gig economy, we are, we are taking on the responsibility for our own education and need to be specialists. So I mentioned this earlier, but I think it's important for us as you start thinking about what is my strategy, what do I want to focus on? You know, it might go without saying, but stay, stay with something you know, right? There's, this is something that you know how to do, assuming it's the knowledge worker type <clears throat> and not just a service where you're driving a car or providing Airbnb rentals and things like that. Number two, she says, how to manage a side hustle when you're employed fully. If you can maintain a consistent flow of clients, you may want to keep the gigs going, even if you have a new full-time job. This is especially true if your career transitions, means you need to start into an entry-level job and you work your way back up. <coughs> so she's got a good point here where many of these gig workers have multiple jobs. Right, they're going from gig to gig to gig, but some of them already have a full-time job that they're doing. So really start to think about that from that perspective. If you're going to be having a consistent flow of clients, how are you going to manage those clients? How are you going to set aside the time and be disciplined to continue doing what you're doing with the gig while also doing your full-time job? And she said, that's why it's, it's smart to start with the side hustle in mind. She says 44 million people have started their own side hustle as a way to make extra money. The key is to choose a hustle that has legs, something you can grow into an income generator, whether you have a full-time job or not. She does give some ideas of things you can do, you know, um, and she's got a list of 105 here. I'm not gonna go through them all, but really start to think about, you know, how are you going to manage this, uh, this uh, gig part-time? The other thing which is pretty important is making yourself invis in, uh, visible. Um, if you're new to the game, you have to start building relationships, creating profiles, being on the various freelance gig finding websites like Upwork or Remote.co. She says this is the best way to, active, to actively and passively market yourself. Actively, you can be searching for gigs that fit your skill sets with your regular job search 
On the other hand, with a good profile in place, people will passively be finding you and referring work to you. So that's where technology comes into play and these various platforms that do provide um, the ability to have other services. And think about it, that's just what a business does. You know, a business has to go out there and market themselves. They have ads, they have, you know, they're doing affiliate programs, lots and lots of other things. Now you need to be thinking about yourself in that perspective and make yourself visible. Finally, she says, don't do it on your own. Um, if you are having trouble and it feels daunting, there's many other ways to get into the gig economy without being a freelancer or contractor. There's so many services out there that if you want to step, you know, put a toe in the water and start doing it, sign up for something like a Uber just to learn how the process works. This can give you the ability to gain some of that discipline, you know, start to really understand how the financials work behind it, get into that routine, and once you've got that routine, then go into the knowledge or skill that you are good at, and you can try and find gigs that way. So even though you are starting out at an entry point, which might be different than what you want to do as a knowledge gig worker, uh, being a service worker can help you build that discipline. So don't show a shy away from jumping in and trying uh, something new there. And finally, she says, just jump into the gig economy with both feet. She says, you know, right now it's a great opportunity. It's a growing industry. And if you really are interested in getting into it, the best time to start is now. So some tips we got here uh, with regard to building your strategy. I think it's important, though, as you think about building your strategy to really come up with, um, you know, a list of the actions that you can try. And as you start to add new actions and figure out what to do, start to retire those other actions. And over time, you're going to come up with the optimal mix. You're listening to My Strategy. I'm your host, John M. Hawkins, coming to you live from the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. When we come back, we're going to tell you how to put your plan in place. We'll be right back. Hi, and welcome back, everyone. I'm John M. Hawkins. We're coming to you live from the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. The show is My Strategy. We're very happy to be here with you today and glad you can join us. In case you missed this broadcast, you can go back to iHeartRadio, Apple iTunes. Um, or if you'd like to have something covered on the show, please send an email to talk at johnmhawkins.com. That's talk at johnmhawkins.com. Or give us a call at 844-MY-STRATEGY. Quick reminder, we've got our, our monthly giveaway now. Uh, you can go to Twitter, Hawkins John, or you can go to johnmhawkins.com. Uh, very simple instructions on how to sign up. Uh, but we've got a great $200 prize package out there, $100 Visa gift card to you, and $100 uh, to Toys for Tots. So this week we've been talking about the gig economy, and we talked a little bit about the statistics behind it. And I think from that perspective, the gig economy is definitely something that's growing. Uh, based on the projections and what we're seeing globally, there is an increase in need for these gig workers. From a growth perspective, the reason why it's growing is technology has been a big driver. Uh, and, and has really helped spur this economy on. Additionally, we're seeing platform platforms that are becoming easier and easier to use. Uh, there was a little bit of talk about the reason we got here with regard to you know the um, the economy and the financial crisis of 2008 and 9. So there's a lot of, of factors uh, that are leading towards the gig economy. Additionally, risks that organizations you know are trying to reduce their risks. So. The gig economy is here. All, in, all uh, intentions are and data shows that it is going to be here for a while. So from a current situation and thinking about the gig economy, as we think about the, the workers, the consumers, and the platforms, those really are the three different fundamental components of the gig economy. So you know, who are the consumers? You know, many of the gig workers are actually consuming other gig worker services. You know, to the point where if you are a gig worker and working from home, you could get all of your services delivered to you, dry cleaning, food, you know, <clears throat> there's Grubhub, there's ways to do everything from home. And so from that perspective, as we start to think about this gig economy and getting involved, there are certain challenges and certain things that you need to be thinking about. And specifically, this is having an impact on careers. 
you know, there was this concept of a nine to five, but with a gig economy, that's no more. The gig economy requires that you have services produced in near real time. It is an on-demand environment. People are looking for a broad range of skills. There's service types of uh, skills out there where you don't need to be skilled, and you can sign up for one of these platforms and be able to get engaged in the gig economy right away. But then also there's knowledge types of gig work out there, and that's where you're going to need to take and make an investment so that you are in a position where you can continue to provide those skills to the consumers. There's uh, lots of uh, ups and downs of being in the gig economy. When you jump into a gig economy, you don't have the benefits that you had before. You're not going to have a manager. You're not going to have all these other things in place that you might have might have needed. And so there's some studies out there and that kind of talk about what you need. I think at the end of the day, it comes down to really you know, finding a place to focus on your work. When you were out of employment, you had a place to work. Think about where you're going to be doing your work. Think about the other people who can help you. Think about the technology and the platform. It comes down to, you know, really becoming and holding yourself accountable. And you're going to get to a point where you need to produce or perish. <clears throat> but all in all, most of the gig workers are extremely happy with the flexibility, and they love the fact that they have a sense of purpose. Then we, need, we talked a little bit about developing your strategy. Stay with something you know. Learn to manage your side hustle while employed and important to make yourself visible. If you can think about it from that perspective, the visibility, get some experience, start growing and developing your gig strategy, it's going to give you a better chance for being successful in this gig economy. And I think it's important that, you know, we, if we're in a habit of not working in a gig economy, which many of us aren't, start to think about how you could reprioritize your day. What are some of the habits that you need to put in place to support it? And all of this comes down to the conscious prioritization and commitment. And always keep in mind that a good coach can help. You've been listening to My Strategy. I'm your host, John M. Hawkins, coming to you live from the BBM Global Network and Tune In Radio. I'm very happy to be here. Glad you could be here. We'll see you next time.